Hello and welcome to Falcon Weekly. I'm Hope Finley. And I'm Courtney Boyd. Thanks so much for joining us. Governor Robert Bentley is trying to deflect attention from his affair allegations and push for impeachment by lawmakers in Montgomery. Speaking today in North Alabama, the governor continued to promote job creation efforts in our state and said he would not step down from office. And Friday, at the Port of Mobile, Bentley signed a new job bill. The governor took reporter questions, but first tried to make it clear what he would and absolutely would not talk about. And a clip from the interview is going viral. Check it out. That's all I'm talking about, so I'm going to tell you that right now. So I'm not talking about anything else, okay? What impact has the scandal had on recruitment? I, uh, did you hear what I just said? Yes, sir. Okay, but, no. But it's okay. a legitimate question. No, no, it's not, okay? We're here today. We signed a bill. I understand, we, sir, we signed a, We signed a bill today to bring jobs to this state, and, but, and that's what we're working on. But Who have else you had any question? blowback from the scandal as far as recruitment? Absolutely none. Absolutely, Absolutely not. not. Do you get the sense they're cooling off on you in the legislature right now in the impeachment uh, process? Not, Is there another question? Did you hear what I said? I said, uh, yes, sir. I, I, look, we, we are dealing with this today. We, we, we will deal with Montgomery. I have already made my statement, and, and so we're, we're, we're moving on. Alabama lawmakers say they need more information before they can move forward with the articles of impeachment filed last week. Bentley has apologized but maintains he did nothing illegal and he has repeatedly said he won't resign. 173,000 cars made here in Alabama are being recalled. Hyundai is recalling the 2011 Sonata. The power steering units on the car can fail, making the car harder to steer. Hyundai says the defect can increase the risk of crashing. The automaker is contacting owners and says it will start making repairs next month. Turning to campus news, registration for fall semester gets underway this week. If you haven't already done so, you can log on to Canvas to view the upcoming schedule of classes. Graduate students started registration today. Seniors start April 13th, juniors sign up for classes on April 15th, sophomores April 19th, and freshmen April 21st. Registration opens at 7 a.m. on those days. Remember, your class designation is determined by credit hours you have earned. Students must meet with their advisors before being able to register. Registration for May and summer classes is already open for all students. Canvas will be getting a whole new look in May. Both the instructor and student interfaces will get an updated layout. The changes will be made on the morning of May 9th. Canvas says the redesign will provide an improved user experience. A video link has been provided for instructors and students to familiarize themselves with. We've placed both of those links on our Facebook page. UM students had the opportunity to show their appreciation for their community this past week by doing a lot of manual labor. Falcon Weekly's Courtney Semelian has the details. Students from organizations across campus came together over the weekend for the big event, an SGA-sponsored day of volunteering to show thanks and appreciation for the town of Montevallo. After meeting bright and early Saturday morning, volunteers were assigned a specific job and location and then headed out across town. We are painting a shed today. We're at three different sites today, one church, and then just two um, houses of locals. We're cleaning the church's windows and weeding and doing the um, front planner and doing mulch and stuff. Montevallo residents were thrilled to have the help. They helped us with everything outside, from washing windows to, to uh, doing the uh, front front and back, and, and then they did some groundwork. They, they uh, uh, dug holes, and they put a flag in the front yard for us, a big American flag. They're going to do in a couple of hours what would have taken us a really long time, so we're really appreciative. We rode through Montevallo, and we saw several other groups like this working and I'm sure that they, uh, it's very good for this, for this little town of Montevallo. And students were happy to roll up their sleeves and give back to the community. It's just a really good opportunity for the whole campus to get together and just like help out the community. It was a great time. The big event's a great thing. I'm really proud to be a part of it. When their jobs were completed, volunteers gathered here in front of the Student Life Center to take a break and enjoy a complimentary lunch. And volunteers could rest easy knowing that the town of Montevallo looks just a little bit nicer today thanks to all their hard work. We, we appreciate y'all, and I'm sure the community does too. Reporting for Falcon Weekly. One, two, three. I'm Courtney Similian. This was the sixth annual big event volunteer project put together by SGA. 
UM's Greek Week kicked off today at 3 with the sign raising, although the signs had to be quickly moved inside because of rain. All week long, members from campuses, fraternities, and sororities will be battling out in games like volleyball and family feud, and will be ending the week with a talent show. Be sure to check out our Facebook page to see Falcon Weekly's Eliah McCutcheon's live report from the sign raising, and again on Wednesday night when I'll give you a look as the Greek community attends a Birmingham Barons game. For a full list of all this week's activities and times, check out our social media pages. There are a couple of health-related events on campus this week. The American Red Cross is holding a blood drive tomorrow and Wednesday in the Farmer Hall meeting room. The blood drive will be from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. The Alabama Department of Public Health will be offering free HIV testing on campus this Thursday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Students wishing to get tested should go to UM Health Services in East Main Hall. The test will be or an oral swab. Students should not eat, drink, or chew gum for at least 20 minutes before the test. Results will take about 20 minutes. A new study out today claims the Zika virus may be more dangerous than scientists originally thought. The study links Zika to an autoimmune condition in adults with similar symptoms as multiple sclerosis. Researchers say patients reported neurological problems including trouble with motor skills, vision, and memory. Zika has already been linked to the fetal brain disorder microcephaly and temporary paralysis. The CDC is now focusing on the explosive number of cases expected in Puerto Rico. There are also 60 Zika cases in the continental U.S. The number of diabetes cases in the world has quadrupled in just over three decades according to the World Health Organization. That means since 1980, more than 400 million people have been diagnosed with the potentially fatal disease. Researchers say it's due to the rising number of people who are overweight or obese. Diabetes can be deadly by raising blood sugar and damaging organs including the heart, liver, and kidneys. Worldwide, diabetes killed 1.5 million people in 2012 alone. Thinking about starting a gluten-free diet? Well, there's a lot to consider. Mary Maloney walks you through some popular foods both on and off the gluten-free menu. Starting your gluten-free diet, it's important to know a few things. Gluten is a type of protein found in wheat, rye, and barley. And for some people with gluten allergies, avoiding those proteins are a must. Probably the hardest thing you'll have to give up once you begin your new regimen is bread. Hamburger buns, bagels, muffins, they're all off limits. The good news? Most grocery stores carry gluten-free products like bread, which are made out of either rice or potato flour. Next on the list is pasta. Luckily, you don't have to entirely say goodbye to those Italian dishes. Look out for gluten-free pasta made from corn or quinoa. And what about dessert, you ask? Unfortunately, since most cookies and cakes are made with wheat flour, you'll have to avoid them too. But if you have a sweet tooth, most hard candies are gluten-free. And when it comes to alcohol, most beers are made with barley malt, so you'll want to skip the six-pack. Wine and liquor are typically gluten-free. Cheers to that! For today's Health Minute, I'm Mary Maloney. Remember, there's always more news online 24-7. Just search for UN Falcon Weekly on Facebook and Twitter to see more stories and news updates throughout the week. Coming up, we've seen flying fish, but one surfer had an encounter with a flying shark. Hear what he had to say about his experience. And it isn't just humans who have to watch their waistlines. We'll tell you how this overweight pup is shedding pounds and getting healthy. Those stories and more when Falcon Weekly returns for the buzz. Falcon Weekly. Now it's time to take a look at some trending stories. Joining us for the buzz are Anlia Nance and Matt Harchuk. So what do you have for us, Anlia? Thanks, guys. One company in Atlanta made a game plan and broke a Guinness World Record for human mattress dominoes. Yep, that's a real thing. Take a look. Guinness verified the feat as 1,200 people on mattress fell one after another, beating Germany's world record. The record-breaking endeavor took place in a 70,000-square-foot facility and lasted almost 14 minutes. Wow. That's a <laughs> crazy game. So, if y'all had the chance to, like, participate in it, would y'all do it and why? Totally. Like, yeah. I think that would be so much fun. Like, look <laughs> at it. That looks like so much Just fun. Just falling one after another. I would be scared that I would get hurt. Yeah, I, that too. Like, 
Cause okay, watch him right around right that there. corner. Yeah, right there. that that lady just like you know she fell off that mattress. Oh yeah, that's terrifying. <laughs> I think it'd be great. I mean, like you eventually you'd be in a book right. as yeah, a part yeah, as a world history. record. Part I think that'd be record. great. That'd be pretty fun. I would love to do that myself. All right, on to the next one. Crime doesn't pay. However, it can make you hungry. This suspected thief got caught on a security camera stealing from a Five Guys restaurant in Washington D.C. But instead of taking money, he began to make himself hamburgers. Police say the burger bandit followed a delivery man to the restaurant. When the worker left, the thief made his meal and stole bottled water. Because of his fedora, he is being compared to the famous burger thief, McDonald's Hamburglar. Police say no arrests have been made. Oh, that's a peculiar story. So what do you guys think about this real life Hamburglar? <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I want to do that myself. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. we're at college really? students over here, you know. Um, but so at the time, you're like, oh, can I make it home, or do I really have to resort to this? Yeah, you know. Yeah. I mean, I wonder, like, if there is an issue, like, does he not have money or something? Like, I'm sure if he went in there and just asked, hey, I don't have any money, can you spare some food? Maybe they would have been nice enough to, like... Sure, here's a free meal, but maybe not, I don't know. I just like how he just walks in casually. And yeah, he's very and calm Then he about talks it. on the on phone. The phone. Yeah. <laughs> like, just make a meal. Like it's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, talk about a close call. A Florida man got knocked off his paddleboard and into the water last Thursday after his encounter with a shark. His GoPro capturing the action, Maximo Trinidad came within inches of the shark and managed to jump over in time. The video has made Trinidad famous on the Juno Beach Pier. He says he wants people to continue to surf, but to be aware of the dangers of the water. I'm pretty sure that was not the way how he wanted to find Nemo, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so what would, what would you guys do if you had a close encounter like that? Out. Oh, yeah, I'd most definitely. I'd try, I don't know. I'd be swimming really, really fast. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I would definitely try to fall like forwards. You can tell that he like started to fall, fall backwards. backwards. And I'm like, you know the shark is right behind you. Why would you not want to fall forward? Like look at him. He's falling backwards. Yeah. Why would you not want to fall forwards and maybe like, stay away, away from, from him? The yeah. Yeah. I'm just, yeah. I know. I'd be terrified. I mean, maybe if it was like still around me. Mm -hmm. You know, they always, on these sh like shark week, they always tell you these like things to do in case you do come into a shark encounter, like hit him on the top of the head or something like that. Right. I'd be like, fight nice. my way, I'd be like, but don't make as much, like splash as little as possible just because apparently that like makes them come back to you. Yeah. I'd hop back on that board real fast. Yeah. So. That's what I'd be on my side. I can't swim, I was. <laughs> well, let's make sure you can swim before we start surfing, okay? Sure. And here's a little inspiration to lose weight as a dog goes from chunk to hunk. Eight months ago, Vincent weighed a jumbo size 38 pounds. He had high cholesterol and became depressed after his owner died. Canine Angels Rescue of Houston took him in from a county animal shelter, animal shelter and look at him now. He slimmed down to 17 pounds with the help of water aerobics and walks. He needs to lose a pound and a half more to reach his goal weight. If you want to follow Vincent's journey to adoption, check out the link on our Facebook page. So what do you guys think about this cute little story? I mean, if he has the motivation to lose weight, I feel like no one has, no. A, has a good <laughs> no excuse. Like, more. no excuse is good enough right. when he can lose weight. He's that's just so my opinion. I'm, in love. <laughs> I'm so in love with it. Look how, look how big he is. And then it, like, that's a lot of weight, especially oh, for yeah, a dachshund. For a dog. I, I have a dachshund, and that's like, <clears throat> that's a big deal. You don't yeah. just lose it overnight. I wish we could, like, see him doing water aerobics. I bet that was, like, the cutest thing in the world. <laughs> I bet that was funny. I think, I think it's a really good story, very inspirational for everyone, I think. Oh, yeah, for sure. I love it. Well, thanks, uh, Matt and Emily, for uh, joining us. But it was a disappointing weekend for a lot of UM teams. But the women's track and field team brought home some titles. Falcon Fever is next. Welcome to Falcon Fever. I'm Corey Graffio with a look at this week's UM Sports. Falcons baseball returned to action Friday beginning a three-game series against the Columbus State Cougars. Despite a pair of homers by Taylor Walker and Dominic DeVille in the fifth inning, Columbus State beat the Falcons 11-7. 
UM would go on to score seven or more runs in every game of the series, but still were swept with scores of 11 to 10 and 13 to 7 in the next two games. The Falcons will look to improve a 20 and 22 record on Wednesday as they return home to face North Alabama. The UM softball team laced up their cleats in a doubleheader against Augusta University on Saturday. Unfortunately, the Falcons were shut out in both games with a score of 0 to 4 and 0 to 1. The team crumbled under pressure again on Sunday in a doubleheader against Georgia College, losing the first game 3 to 11 and the second game 0 to 4. This brings Montevallo's record to 19 and 30 with a 3 and 13 conference record. Moving on to lacrosse, the Falcons took on the University of Alabama Huntsville Friday. Both teams scored within the first minute of the game, but the turnovers were too much for Montevallo to bounce back from. After 26 turnovers, the Falcons fell to the Chargers 18 to 5. The women also suited up against Young Harris on Sunday, but were again unsuccessful. UM came up short 20 to 5 in the final home game of the season. Both the men and women's track and field team were in competition Friday in the heart of Dixie Brawl. The men's team featured four runner-up finishes, including T.J. Farish coming in second in the long jump. Senior Shaquem Jackson also finished second in the 400-meter dash with a time of 51.18 seconds. For the women's team, UM had five athletes capture individual titles. Junior Cheyenne Thompson claimed the title in the 1,500-meter run. Freshman Hunter Chavery took home the title for the 100-meter hurdle. Sophomore Lauren Pearson grabbed the title for the high jump. Sophomore Cheyenne Cadet received the 400-meter dash title. And sophomore Katie Nelson snagged the title for the 3,000-meter run. And switching gears to professional golf, Former Alabama resident and Jacksonville State University golfer made a big impression at the 80th Masters. Danny Willett earned this year's green jacket after being five strokes under par. Last year's Master winner Jordan Spieth tied, this, tied for second. Willett is the second Englishman to ever win. Last year he tied for 38th place at his first appearance at the Masters. He was the 2006 Ohio Valley Conference Freshman of the Year at JSU and also won medalist honors in 2007 at the OVC Championship. And that's a look at this week's sports. For more recaps and scores, check out MontevalloFalcons.com. Thanks, Corey. Animal lovers everywhere will have a reason to celebrate today. April 11th is National Pet Day. Let's take a look at some of Falcon Weekly's furry friends. <laughs> Oh, Courtney, is that your dog? Yeah. <laughs> What's his name? Uh, his name's Baxter, and he's a corgi. Oh, He's so cute. <laughs> That's like my mom's kitten. They, her cat just had kittens, and I just think it's the cutest thing in the world. <laughs> Do you have a pet? I don't. I really want an English bulldog. Oh, oh those are this. cute. Do y'all have matching pajamas? Is that what that picture was? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, that's all the time we have for this week's show. Thank you so much for joining us. For more UM news from MassCom student reporters, be sure to check out the Falcon News Network blog. The web address is on your screen. We'll see you again next week.